What's going on guys, my name is Matt, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, or even just a few days, you probably know that I'm a big proponent for going with used PC hardware. Now, obviously going used does have its downsides, which I'll talk about more in this video, but if you're willing to take a dive into the used market, you can get some insane value for the money, and this $10 quad-core CPU I'm showing off today is one of the best examples of this. The CPU you're looking at right now is the Intel Xeon X3430, a CPU you can pick up right now on AliExpress for under $10 with free shipping, and as you're about to see, this is a great deal. The X3430 is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU clocked at 2.4 GHz with a turbo speed of 2.8 GHz. It's unlocked and can be overclocked, which I'll talk about more later. It's running on Intel's LGA 1156 platform and can slot into any consumer-grade 1156 board, so no weird server boards required. When I found out about the CPU, I knew I had to make a video and show it off to you guys and I thought the best way to do that would be to compare it to a modern quad-core CPU, which in this case is going to be the Ryzen 3 1200, which comes in right around $100. Now, obviously with the X3430 coming out over 8 years ago, it's not going to have nearly as good single-threaded performance and not going to be using the latest and greatest technology, but honestly, that's not too bad as the X3430 uses DDR3 versus DDR4 used on the Ryzen platform, which is much cheaper and motherboards for the CPU aren't that expensive either. As obviously you need more than just a CPU for a PC, I thought instead of comparing just the price of the CPUs, I would compare the price of the core platform, so CPU, motherboard, and RAM. The X3430 is at or below $10, with overclocking motherboards coming in at just under $60. For RAM, 8GB of DDR3 can be easily found for $40 or less. The X3430 doesn't come with a cooler, so we need to add in about $10 for a cooler also, putting the total for the core platform at around $120. For the Ryzen 3 system, the CPU itself is $100. An overclocking B350 board will usually run you at least $60, and 8GB of decently fast DDR4 is going to run you around $85 to $90. The Ryzen 3 1200 includes a decent stock cooler, so that part is free, making the total for the Ryzen core platform around $250, basically double the price of the Xeon base platform. Now keep in mind, going with a Ryzen based system means all the components are new and have warranties, and also keep in mind either of these platforms prices could be reduced a decent amount with a little bit of deal hunting. For my X3430 based test system, I'm using an Intel P55 motherboard which I got super cheap on Craigslist. It was a little dirty and beat up, but I paid like $15 for it and it works so that's good with me. Now Intel boards don't officially support overclocking, but poking around on a few forums I found people were able to get slight overclocks using this board. To cool the CPU, I used one of Intel's copper core based stock coolers, which I had on hand, and I used 8GB of G-Skill Ripjaws RAM I purchased in a combo deal on Craigslist, but if purchased individually, the guy would have sold it to me for $25. For the Ryzen based system, I used a Ryzen 3 1200 with stock cooler, an ASRock B350 board, and 8GB of Team Group DDR4 at 3000MHz. For overclocking, after a whole bunch of tweaking, I got a mild overclock of 3.2GHz on the X3 3430. Obviously this could go much higher with a better motherboard and cooler, but I was happy with it, and for the Ryzen 3 system, I gave it a mild overclock of 3.7 GHz across all cores. For testing, I ran both of these through Cinebench and tested four games pairing these two CPUs with the GTX 1050. Not the most powerful card ever, but it is a great option to pair with either of these CPUs. Starting with Cinebench, a benchmark used to calculate raw CPU performance, the X3430 received a score of 400 131, and the Ryzen 3 1200 received a score of 584. This gives you a good idea of the IPC difference between these two chips, and even though the X3430 is pretty old, I was happy to see it still gives a respectable score at about 75% of the score of the Ryzen 3. Moving on to gaming benchmarks, I tested four games including PUBG, Fortnite, Overwatch, and Rocket League. I tested all these at medium or below as I wanted the CPU to be the limiting factor in these tests. Starting out with Overwatch at medium settings with 100% resolution scaling, the Ryzen based system received an average of 116 FPS and the X3430 received an average of 91 FPS. Both of these provided a great experience, but obviously the Ryzen 3 provided a noticeable bump in FPS. Moving on to Fortnite, at 1080p medium settings, the Ryzen 3 based 
system provided an average of 87 FPS, and the X3430 gave an average of 72 FPS. Again, both of these were great experiences well above 60 FPS. Moving on to PUBG, which saw the biggest differential in overall performance. At 1080p low settings, the Ryzen 3 base system averaged 65 FPS, with the X3430 system giving an average of 49. Still, both were playable experiences, but the Ryzen CPU was the only one of the two that averaged above the 60 FPS mark. Finally, moving on to Rocket League, at 1080p medium settings, the Ryzen system averaged 190 FPS, with the X3430 system providing an average of 169 FPS. Overall, both of these CPUs gave really great experiences while gaming. I was honestly surprised at how well the X3430 held up to the Ryzen CPU, and think that at $10, it's providing an amazing value for the money. Again, if you're wanting a fully new system with a good upgrade path, I still think the Ryzen 3 is the way to go, but if you're looking to throw something together for very cheap, I would heavily recommend considering the X3430. If you're interested in any of the parts mentioned in the video, I'll have links to them in the description down below. I may make another video in the future trying to push the X3430 to its limits with a better board and cooler, so if you'd be interested to see that, let me know in the comment section down below. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.